Hello everybody, this is Hammer Striker here. We've got this Hellcat and we're going to really pimp this thing out. We're going to put a Viridian E-Series laser on it. We're going to put this red dot on it and we're going to put Talon grips on it. And if you remembered watching the video, you're probably wondering, well, why am I going to take these grips off? And wait a second, you can't put a red dot on this gun because it's not the OSP version. And you would be correct. But this one is. This is a second Hellcat. This one is the OSP version. See the plate. And it doesn't have any grips on it. So we're going to start out with just doing the red dot here to avoid a bunch of clutter on the table. Get the red dot put on it. Then we'll move on to the laser and the, the talon grips. The red dot that I have on the table here is the Shield SMSC. And if you've looked at the various things on this gun, there are two red dots that are recommended by Springfield. The Shield RMSC and this SMSC. The RMSC is readily available outside of Springfield. Right now, as of the making of this video, you can only get the SMSC from Springfield. You order it right from their site. It's $2.99. They ship it right to your house. The primary difference between them is the SMSC has a polymer body. The RMSC has an aluminum body. And both of them have a polymer optic, which you'll see is actually quite clear. And before you get too worried about the polymer, it's probably not truly a polymer. It's more likely a polycarbonate like you would find in your eyeglasses. And that type of lens has been around for quite a long time. It's quite popular and they're pretty durable. The key to it is they're light. This thing only weighs a half ounce with the screws. It actually weighs less than the plate we're gonna to remove to put the thing in. The slide on the OSP, as well as the original one, the regular one without the removable plate, weighs 11 and a half ounces. The slide with the red dot on it when we're done will lay, weigh 11 ounces. So the slide's actually going to get lighter when we remove this plate and put the red dot on there. And that's going to be important for a couple reasons. One is cycling speed and reliability. And two, when I put this thing on top of the gun, which of course is going to sit down in that well, but you'll see it's not much thicker than the gun. And when it sits down in the well, it's actually right about the exact width of the slide. So the small size of the footprint of it is going to matter to what we're trying to do here. The first step is to remove the slide from the gun, remove the barrel, and basically get it in a, where you have just the slide by itself, which is pretty easy to do. You lock it back, flip the lever up, pull the trigger, pull it apart, take the barrel out, set those parts aside. So we've got just the slide that we're going to work on. Before we get into the mechanics of doing this, let's talk about a few of the things that are actually here on the table. This kit you can buy separately on Springfield sites, a few dollars, but it also comes with the OSP itself. This you can either buy from Springfield or you can get the RMSC on the open market and possibly at some point you'll be able to get this anywhere. What comes with the red dot in the box is this battery, of course, an instruction manual. Now the instruction manual I found to be a little bit on the confusing side because it makes reference to things that don't exist on this. For example, there's reference to pushing a button on the front of the site to open a drawer to be able to change the battery. Well, there's no drawer. The battery sits right in the base of it and there's there's no provision for any kind of sliding parts so the manual looks like it's possibly basically the RMSC or RMS manual kind of brought forward comes with some stickers you'll see that on the battery itself I can find where a thing rent went to one of the stickers goes on the bottom of the battery because when the battery drops in here it actually is right there at the bottom of the site there's nothing that goes over the top of the battery and it locks in place and by the way, this looks like a sticker when you look at it, and it's got Do Not Remove on it. It covers the electronics, and you do not want to peel that off, even though it kind of looks like the type of thing you might peel off as a protective, you know, shipping protection. And it comes with a couple stickers. And it comes with some other parts you're not going to use on the Hellcat installation. A shim plate, and you'll see the shim plate, if you look at it really carefully, is thinner at one end than the other, and it may be kind of hard to see. Basically, it's an elevation shim, so that if you had were mounting this on something that had, where you couldn't get it to zero, you could use this to elevate it front or rear, 
and get it to zero. We won't be using that in the Hellcat. And you won't be using the screws that come with it because you're going to be using these specific ones that, help, that Springfield provides. And then this wheel, you can put this on the adjustment wrench. It does come with the adjustment wrenches, so you will use the adjustment wrenches. But if you put this on the adjustment wrench, you'd push it all the way down through. You can use it as a guide to see how much you've turned it, which that's kind of cool. I probably won't use that mostly because you'll be just turning a few clicks. And I'm going to use a bore laser for the initial setup on this, and then I'll finish it at the range. But that's kind of a useful little tool. And there's also a couple washers in there that can be used as shims. So overall, it comes with several parts that you would use if you're going to put this on a different gun that you won't use putting it on a Springfield. And then the Springfield kit, it's in a clear bag, so it's pretty easy to see what you get. You get the two screws and you get the two wrenches. Let's go ahead and get started. We won't need this in the baggie anymore. We're going to need these parts out where we can get to them. So open it up and dump them out. Set that aside. I'm going to put the battery in the red dot. Now this red dot doesn't have an on-off feature that you can manually control. Once the battery's in it, it's on. But it's designed to turn off in the dark. So they rate the, the lifespan of the battery from one year if the gun is constantly kept in the light to four plus years if it's kept in the dark. So for example, if it's in a safe when you're not carrying it and it's you know, in a holster or otherwise concealed when you are, it's going to be dark. So I press the battery into place. Now I should be able to show you if I can get it to show up. There it is. Now keep in mind that the dot is going to look really bad. Cameras don't do well with these things. The dot itself is actually quite clear. You'll find that red dots in general, when you show them on camera, they always look pretty bad but it really is a nice nice pinprick clean dot that will vary in intensity depending on the lighting condition so the brighter it is the brighter the dot will get when it's fully dark it'll go completely off and make sure the battery is fully in there flush now once you've pushed the battery in there's no way to easily get it out without using one of these little notches there's a little notch in the frame right there and you can reach in with the wrench get the wrench up under the battery and flip it out but once that's in place, now all we need to do is remove the plate from the top of the gun. One thing I did find, and you'll use the wrench that comes with the kit, is these heads are not very deep. So you want to make sure that you get the, the wrench in there nice and straight, nice and square, and keep it upright and push in. I fear it might be easy to strip these, and if you do, if you strip these heads out, it's a trip to a gunsmith, back to Springfield, or to a drill press. So I'm going to remove them and I did pre-loosen them to make this easier on film because I knew I was going to be holding it in a less optimal position for me to hold it. Once I remove them I can take the plate off with the screws and I'm going to want to save the plate and the screws for later and this plate weighs 0.9 ounces. The red dot of course is going to go with the lens towards the front you know, your classic formation where you're going to look at it from behind and you just set it in place there's little notches here on the gun that will align with little holes in the bottom of the red dot to hold it in place and then you take the two screws that come with it now you may or may not want to put blue loctite on these one important note is if you look it may be hard to show it on the camera. Actually, you can see it on this one right here. See that spring? These holes go down into the internals. So number one, that's why I use the screws that come with it. You don't want longer screws that reach in and touch those parts. And number two, you would never want to put red, any kind of uh, Loctite or anything like that in those holes. You'd gum up the works. So if you choose to use Loctite, I'm going to try to do this without it. If I find that I need Loctite, I'll take it back apart and do it. You would want to put it on the screw first, use very little of it, and then let it dry which is actually part of the normal instructions for Loctite, but everybody always skips that. They'd put a drop on there and just go right to town. You'd want to let it dry so that it couldn't drip down into the works. But as I mentioned, I'm going to try to do it without the Loctite. And if I have a problem with it loosening up, then I'll do that. Drop these two screws that came with the Springfield kit in there. They use the longer wrench. 
And what I always do with this and anything like this is to turn them down snug first and then tighten them in an alternating pattern so that we don't warp the red dot. So you turn each one till it's snug and then go back and forth until they kind of seat. And I don't want to tighten this like I'm trying to put on a tire. I'm just going to put them down to their snug. If I find they loosen up rather than tightening them tighter, I will go with a, a little bit of blue Loctite on them. But at this point, it is now mounted and ready to go. One thing I just noticed when I was getting ready to clean up and ready to go zero, I failed to point out how you adjust it. So I have the wrench right now in the windage adjustment. And I'll just turn it back and forth and adjust the windage. And the elevation adjustment is there at the top. So you'd go back and forth between them and zero the, zero the dot. And I've already got the bore laser installed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to a place where I'm at about 15 yards and just align those two dots and I'm good to go. Now that we've got the red dot taken care of, I'm going to go ahead and move on to the laser. And Viridian was kind enough to send us this E-Series, which is their new series of low-profile lasers, primarily for the pocket pistols. This particular one grips around the front of the trigger guard. So you'll see that there's a bit of a clip there, and the trigger guard's going to go through here. Similar in concept to the Crimson Traces that you've seen on my Glocks. The only thing is, because the Hellcat does have a rail, it's going to use part of the rail as well. So it doesn't need to use as much of the trigger guard. These are all fairly easy to install. And the way this thing came, it came inside of a, the box, inside of a bubble wrap, so it was well protected. And it came with the instruction manual, the laser, a battery, and two wrenches. One is for the installing screws, and one is for the zeroing, the alignment screws. And that's one important note. When you look at this thing, there's a screw here, and there's a screw here. These are the installation screws. These are the ones you want to mess with while you're doing this. The zeroing is here and here, and you don't want to be trying to take those out. That's not how you take it apart. So the first step is to remove the installation screws so that I can split the two halves. And it's relatively easy to do. It's kind of a little detail-y thing because the screws are small, the wrench is small, the laser is small. And you do want to pay attention to which one's on the bottom and which one's on the top because on some of these E-series, depending on the gun, they may be different lengths. So I'm going to put the bottom one over here to the other side and then I split the laser in half. Here's the battery compartment and there is a little rubber bumper under there that needs to make sure that stays there. That's partially to make sure the battery doesn't bounce. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, you can see it right there. That's not trash. That's not something you throw away. It's right under the spring. It's kind of hard to see because everything in there is black. Let's see if I can turn it. Yeah, now you can see it's a little bit more grayish. So leave that in there. That's not something you pull out and throw away. And you just insert the battery. And then I'm going to push the button and test it to make sure the laser comes on. And it does. Now I'll turn the laser back off and go ahead and put it on the gun. Now the way this is going to go on the gun is, is you really can't get it wrong because if you try to put it on backwards it just won't line up. So I'm going to put the one part of it on the gun and I looped it over the trigger guard and on the rail and you'll see there's no rail clamp on it where you tighten on the rail. You don't need it because when you tighten the clamshell together, it's going to hold around the trigger guard and the rail. And you'll see that it's kind of wrapped around the trigger guard there. Turn the gun back around and put the other piece on. And it should just line up and go together. Now I turned it up towards me so I can see it, but all I was doing is making sure the pieces were lined up before I gave it a squeeze. And you really do want to make sure everything is lined up before you start tightening the screws. You don't want to use the screws, and I did just turn the laser on when I was doing that. I hit the button. You don't want to use the screws to draw it in, other than the fact it's going to have a little bit of spring to it because of the battery and everything. But if it hasn't lined up, don't try to force it together with the screws. I'm going to put the top screw in. Put the bottom 
thumb screw in. And then as I tighten them, I'll run them down until they start to get snug, and then I'll alternate them just to make sure that if there's any sort of misalignment that kind of pulls it out rather than warping. This is plastic housing, so you do want to just tighten it kind of finger tight. Notice I'm using the short end of the wrench to grab on and the longer end to keep my hand away from the, so I'm not bumping into the gun and stuff like that. But I'm not using the long end where I get massive amounts of torque on it. That one's snug. And that one's snug. So now the laser is installed. I'll go ahead and close the gun, which of course I had it open to show it was unloaded as well. And I can turn it on and off with my finger. So even with a normal fire and grip, all I got to do is pull my hand forward a little bit. If you've got longer fingers, you won't even have to do that. And you can turn the laser on and off. Now one thing that may come to mind is, well wait a second, why do you have two optics? Isn't it kind of redundant? You got a red dot and you got a laser. Well, maybe. Uh, I did want to pimp this gun out all the way. But one thing to consider is the red dot, you have to bring the gun up in front of you in a firing grip with the red dot up in front of your eyes lined up. In a self-defense scenario, that may not be an option. That's probably going to give you a little bit better accuracy, but you may find yourself in a compromised position where you're having to fire around a corner, under a table, or just snap up and quick. And that's the advantage a laser gives you. So it may or may not be redundant to have both devices but they do kind of give you different options for how you acquire. The laser is a little bit quick up, but not always as accurate as a red dot, but the red dot gives you a little more reliable, reliable centering, it's a smaller dot, and if, of course, you have the luxury of bringing the gun up that way. By the time you're done with that, when you take the fact that you can either get 11 rounds plus one in the nice, real flush, compact two-finger grip, or you can get 13 rounds plus one and almost get a full three finger grip. You've got a pretty flexible setup here for self-defense, you know, carry, and even home defense. Now, these do come with a pretty nice texture on them. They've, Springfield has done a lot of engineering on this texture and it's actually quite a nice texture. But one thing you'll find, depending on the size of your hands, the grip may be just a little too small to get a good, good solid grip on and align it the way you want. So you may choose to put a grip on it, really just to make the grip a little bigger. So you've seen this gun where we put a Hellcat, it's a handle it grip for the Hellcat, and it's got this green inset and it's really cool. But what we're going to put on this one is a Talon grip that Talon sent us that will perform the same function. I like the rubber grip, so both of them are the rubber style grips, but you'll be able to see the difference between the two. And in that case, it makes the grip just a little bit bigger and a little bit easier if you've got larger hands. Last thing I'm going to do before I run off to the range is I'm going to use the red dot to do an initial zero on the laser, and then I'll finalize the zero at the range, and we'll see how these things work. One thing I did actually probably need to show you before I go to the range is what do these Talon grips that I was talking about look like. So what it comes with is the grip for the body of the gun, or the, the, the grip of the gun itself, one that goes on the pinky extender for the 10-round magazine, and one that goes on the 13 round magazine. It wraps all the way around the magazine. And I don't like pinky extenders, so I don't have the pinky extender on any of the magazines to show this. I can at least show you what it looks like on the pinky extender, even though I don't have it on a magazine. You'll see that it blends well with the shape of it. It goes around basically three quarters of it. It doesn't grow on the back only because it's open at the back, unlike the other one. But it's very well done, very well molded, fits into the contour and the texture. So it would integrate well with the grip, just like the one on the extended magazine does. And you'll see that the Talon grip is a full wrap around. It is the rubberized texture. It goes into the finger grooves and leaves the middle part so you don't end up with a hump here or anything to snag on. And it does wrap around up underneath that right here, and you can barely see it. But what that prevents is these from, you know, if there was a, if some of them will end right here on some of the designs from other manufacturers, and they like to pick and pull up. With them coming up underneath it, it keeps it really solid. It's not going to come apart. And of course, you do use a heat gun or a hair dryer to heat these up to conform them. Now, I'm not going to show the installation procedure in this particular video. And number one, the video is getting long. And number two, we installed a set of these Talon grips on a P365. 
So I wanted to show them to you on the Hellcat, but we'll put a link to that P365 installation because fundamentally the process is the same for installing Talon grips, and that goes into a detailed step-by-step, -step. but at least here you can see what the grips do look like. They're, Talon makes really, really nice grips. They do a really good job in anything they do, and they do have the sandpaper texture available. I just personally don't like the sandpaper texture on any of the grips, so I prefer the rubberized, but you know, it's going to come down to your choice, and it is pre-cut and pre-conformed, to the grip of the specific gun. So I, I didn't use a knife at all on this. I took these, installed them the way they came, they lined right up, everything's perfect, doesn't interfere with the mag release, ready to go right out of the box. Once you've done one uh, a time or two, it's very easy to install these. We're back from the range. The gun worked flawlessly. The laser was just a hair off from my initial rough doing it in here in the house. But once I got to the range, I did a little bit of a tweak. I probably can tweak it a little bit more. I was kind of hitting just a hair left, but it was a nice tight group. And the laser dot did co-witness with the dot from the red dot. But of course, when I was testing with the laser for creating the range video for you guys, I lowered the gun a little bit down below my sight line. So when I was shooting the laser footage, I couldn't see the red dot. And then when I was shooting the red dot footage, I turned the laser off. So they are one for one, but at one point I did turn the laser on just to see how it lined up with the red dot, and it, it was lined right up. I think the distance that I was shooting at the range was a little longer than I zeroed it here. But overall, it's a good combination. You might not choose to do all of this. And by the way, this talent grip was quite comfortable, and it kept the gun really positioned well. But you may choose to do, let's say, the red dot or the laser, but this gun kind of gives you the test scenario for all three of those modifications the grip, the laser, and the uh, red dot. Beyond that, if you like our videos, please give us a thumbs up, share, subscribe, click that bell up there to get notified if you do. Check us out on Facebook, Patreon, Twitter, GunStreamer, we're all over the place, even Instagram. Thank you.